Shared your story. I know this is not easy, and I try to tell people that it's not easy, but I really do appreciate you uh, being willing to share your story. So uh, we're just going to kind of jump in uh, and get started. Does that sound good? Yes. All right, here we go. Uh, I've got a press release, and I want to read something from here. That's going to lead us into our discussion. That thing's making crazy. I know, sorry. All right. It's all right. <laughs> Uh, the Henry County Sheriff's Office, in cooperation with the Virginia State Police, the Marshall Police Department, Drug Enforcement Agency, and the Alcohol, Tobacco, and Car Arms, conducted a joint drug operation in Henry County between January 2011 and May 2012. Known drug areas of Henry County were the focus of the operation. Undercover drug purchases, search warrants, and vehicle stops occurred in the following areas. Henry County, Ridgeway, Axon, Collinsville, Bass, and Horse Pasture. Authorities purchased or seized quantities of cocaine ranging from 1 gram to 36 kilograms with various street values ranging from $100 to over $1.3 million. And then it said uh, on September 20th, 2012, 34 people were arrested on state indictments issued on September 17th, 2012. And one of those names listed was Jamie Lee Ellis of Axton, Virginia. Um, where were you on the day uh, of uh, September the 20th? Because I know for me, there are certain markers in my life, days in my life that I refer back to and I remember. And so where were you on that day? Well, I had gotten up early and went to work. Um, I'm self-employed, so my girls were old enough. Juliet drove Montgomery to school and both of them were at home getting ready and I had gotten up early and Jamie was at home. Okay, so how did you find out that Jamie had been arrested? Well, my girls called me at the office and said that a policeman had come to our house and had arrested dad <laughs> and I told them don't worry about anything. It was a mis probably was a mistake. So just they go on to school and I'll take care of it. <laughs> right. right. Which is pretty amazing. They went on to school, right? They did. They went to school and, mm -hmm. and you began to take uh, go through the process. So who was somebody you called first to oh, get some encouragement from? My sister. Okay. I call my sister every time something happens in my life. <laughs> It is. Like yeah. right, so, what, was, what did she tell you? What was her advice to you? Quit crying and go up there and bail him out. <laughs> wow. So, no questions asked. No, anything. This is what you're going to do. You're going to go and, and you're going to make this happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's pretty amazing, uh, I think. Now, uh, I'm guessing the day was probably a blur. Uh, oh, and I don't yeah. know how much you remember, uh, but. Do you remember what was going through your mind? Were you shocked? Um, did you have any idea that any of this was going on, that, no. that this was coming? No, you know, a lot of people maybe would call me naive, but I knew Jamie did drugs, but he never did it in our home. Um, he had a shop that he and the guys hung out at and um, you know, I never dreamt that would happen, but I knew things were going on, but it wasn't, I, I guess we kind of lived two separate lives okay. at that time. Okay. So how long had this been going on, the drug use, I mean? Um, I mean, you know, through all of our young teenage years, um, you know, I knew, uh, and we, even in our early marriage, we had couples that we hung out with that we, you know, would go out with and drink and we, but I didn't know until, I mean, I knew of pot and stuff like that, but I didn't know it had gone to the next level until um, around 2000. I was pregnant with Montgomery and we were in New Orleans for the Sugar Bowl. Tech was playing in the Sugar Bowl and I found cocaine in the suitcase. 
the 2000, you actually knew that it was going on then. Mm -hmm. Okay. But see, for me, when this all happened, I was like, ah, oh, it's just a, one of them. It just happened. You know, it could have been going on for long, but this has been something that had been a part of y'all's lives for a while. Well, at least Jamie's life mm -hmm. for a while. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I want to come back to that. Okay. Let's come back to that part of the thing. I'm sorry. Hey, no, you're fine. <laughs> this should be uh, not making that much noise. Let me move it up. Sorry. <laughs> Y'all don't worry about it. All right. Uh, but how about let's do it. Why don't we, let's go back some because I, I want people to get to know you a little bit. So just tell me a little bit about, you know, where you were born, you know, how you grew up and, and just any of that yeah. kind of stuff you want to share with us. Well, I was born in Martinsville, um, raised in Axton and went to Laurel Park High School, graduated from Laurel Park, um, raised in the church. My mom and dad went to church. I mean, we were involved. I was in, um, you know, GAs. We went to Sunday school, church camp. Um, you know, that foundation was there. But and at 12, I was baptized in that small church. But it wasn't a change of my life. Okay. So when did Jamie become a part of your life? Um, our senior year in high school, we started dating, and I don't recall that we planned to go to Tech, both of us, but we both ended up at Tech, and we started, we were dating, of course, so we continued dating on and off. <laughs> we had our little ups and downs, but, you know, like everybody. So, um, so it was just a normal kind of... You get married, uh, you, you start a family. You said there were couples mm -hmm. uh, that you all hung out with. What kind of stuff, did, I mean, did you guys just, y'all were just doing life together with yeah. these couples? Yeah, oh yeah. We were good friends. We all would get together on the weekends, you know, go out to eat. Um, I mean, we would drink, we would, we had, our kids started. I was the first one in our group to have a child and Juliet was born in 94, and then after that, you know, our friends started having kids. So our kids were, you know, grew up together at a young age. Gotcha. So nothing unusual about what you guys were, were doing as a young couple, just doing the things that couples do. Mm -hmm. Okay, of course, you, uh, you had a business. Mm -hmm. Jamie had a business as well, both doing well. So, so life's pretty good on the outside. Right? Yeah. Okay, well then let me ask you this question. You said you were baptized in 12, but it, 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 it was just kind of there. Can you tell me when things begin to change for you spiritually? Well, in the church that we were going to was a small church, and there was a lot of conflict going on in that church. So, um, I told Clara this morning, she was one, Clara Barnes was one of the first ones that invited mom to Rich Acres. And so mom said, um, Clara and Elsie Joyce worked with mom. They invited her here and mom said, let's go and see, you know, visit. So we did. And when we came, Creighton Beatty was the pastor here then. And Creighton would, any new um, people in the congregation, he would do a, he would ask if we wanted to meet, you know, just talk about our faith. And so he asked if we wanted to do a study together. And we did. And so 20 years ago, on this day, June 2nd, 1999, I was baptized here. <laughs> and that was a turning point for me. That's pretty amazing. Twenty years, y'all caught that, right? Twenty years ago today is when she was baptized. And Tim didn't plan that. No. Um, he asked me. He said, "How about June second? And I was like, "Oh, that's early." <laughs> and I went home and I was staring at my blank notebook page that I was supposed to write notes on, and I got out my baptism certificate, and I was like, "Oh my word! Thank you, Lord." <laughs> It's kind of like it, she felt, all right, I'm supposed to do this. You know, God lined that part up. Uh, but God has been doing that kind of stuff 
for you for a long time. Oh yeah. Uh, can you tell me just as you began to develop uh, this relationship with the Lord, where it wasn't just a, I'm going to church, but my parents want me to go to church right. or whatever, but you're you're really beginning to, to connect with God. Tell me what that looked like for you. Um, well, God doesn't come to us and hit us over the head with the Bible. And so that study and just studying and getting in the Word and then the fellowship in the church and surrounding myself with believers and um, teaching and you know, Christian music. I mean, it's, it's a whole lot of items that played into that or into my growth, but he just, God set a fire in me that only he could do and changed me. Okay. So he changed you through what? People, through the word, through um, getting in his word. I, had, I just couldn't get enough of the word. I was craving it. I, was, I wanted to read. I wanted to study. I wanted to hear. I, uh, you know, I was just hungry for it. Yeah. And which, I hate to say it, a lot of people aren't. Mm. So you're saying the, the, the fire that was kindled in you came through study of the Word. Oh, most definitely. Okay, and you did that yeah. personally. How else did you study the Word? Well, I mean, we were, I got, went to conferences. You know, I took my girls every year to this big youth conference in Atlanta. That was a tradition of ours. Um, you know, you just, you surround yourself you may have people you have to cut out of your life that aren't good for you. Um, I had to look at that. I mean, there were some people that weren't good influences. I loved them, but I had to step away from them because God was saying, I want you. And I had to put him first above everything. Okay. And you had not done that up to this point. Oh, no. So in y'all no. marriage, you're, you're none of that. No, I mean, that diagram you showed last week with the husband and the wife and God at the top, you have to do that. You have to put God at the top because if you don't, nothing falls into place correctly. Yeah, right. Uh, I think it's interesting. You know, I've been a part of this story uh, from the beginning. And mm -hmm. it's easy for, I guess, me and anybody that knows Jamie's story to go, Man, what an instantaneous change that happened. You know, he just, boy, he, this all happened. And man, the Lord got a hold of him and he changed. <laughs> but what I'm hearing from you, and, and you and I have talked about your story for a while, is this was not an instantaneous change. This was a 13-year change because you didn't start getting close to the Lord until 1999. That's when God began to work. And so it was 13 years later before this happened with Jamie, mm -hmm. anything changed with him. So how did, was the change about Jamie or was the change more about you? Well, God has to change us individually. And I do believe that God started working on me and God's plan was much bigger than I, I could ever imagine. But of course, we don't always like his ways of getting people's attention, but whatever it takes, and you have to be faithful and he will answer. I mean, I prayed for Jamie for those years. I would write in my prayer journal, Lord, change Jamie. Mm -hmm. um, I did, I shared with our Wednesday night group, I did a fast one time with a friend of mine, and but that year, after I fasted in January, is when Jamie was arrested. Wow. Wow. So God was not only working on Jamie, but he was working on you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Most okay. definitely. Was there ever a time when you were angry? Angry at Jamie? Angry at God? And I don't mean when this situation happened, but even in all of those years oh, that you yeah. were struggling in this, you know, in your relationship with the Lord, and he wasn't, and all mm -hmm. that. 
most definitely. I mean, we had our our issues, but Jamie was a he'd come to church with us on Easter and Christmas, and <laughs> um, but he you have. To, I had to separate myself, so to speak. I had to look at my relationship with the Lord. God can't change anyone else until he changes you. And then he'll use you to change other people. See, that was the most amazing thing that you've said to me. And this is probably the third or fourth time you've said that is, if he doesn't change me, he's going to have a hard time changing anybody else around me. Right. And I think that is brilliant. I think that's yeah. what all of us need to realize is that it starts with us even before it can start with people around us. Yeah, and I would get mad. I would I told Jamie numerous times, I want a divorce. He ignored me. Um, maybe God was telling him something that he didn't know and I didn't know. <laughs> so you just ignored him. Okay. I mean he ignored you. you yeah. Said, I want a divorce and he's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And, and you hung in there. Mm-hmm. That's the amazing thing to me is you, you hung in there through all of this. I did, and I can't tell you why, only that God, God filled me. He gave me what I needed, and it was Him. Right. So it was only Him filling me with the Holy Spirit, and I was happy with myself. Okay. So in that regards, my marriage, I hate to say this, but my marriage kind of took second place, but there again, it's that lining up. Right. So that actually it taking second place prepared you for 2012 mm -hmm. and further. Yes, wow. <laughs> most that's, definitely. That's well, what would you say to somebody? Because I believe there's going to be people in this service <clears throat> and people in the next service who are struggling in their marriage. They're struggling in their relationship with the Lord. They're just in a struggle. They say, Pam, I pray, and God's not listening. You know, because when we pray, we go, all right, God, I just pray. You need to answer now. Yeah. What would you say to them to encourage them? You need to seek God with all of your heart. You need to surround yourself. You need to be in the Word. You need to do everything you can personally for yourself. I mean, God may tell a husband or a wife, leave. Um, that could be what happens. Um, but in some instances, like mine, He told me to stay. Right. So... You have to listen to God. And I think that's hard for us today. There's so much going on in the world. We're listening to the television. We're listening to the radio. We're listening, looking on social media. We're not disciplined enough to sit still and go, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? Wow, I, that's good. That's good. There's so much noise, it's hard to hear God. Yeah. Uh, and I, I read in the devotion this week that uh, when God was speaking to Elijah, when he was having that struggle, you know, it was an earthquake, it's, a, it's all this, and then it's a whisper. Mm -hmm. And if God's whispering to us, and we have all this noise in our life, we can't hear no. what he has to say. No. And you know, a lot, Jamie and I, now, praise God, Jamie and I talk about scripture. We talk about God, we talk about our faith. <laughs> God is just so good. I was going to say, how amazing is that? <laughs> oh, yeah. To look back and go, now my husband is leading my family? Mm. Did you ever think there would be a day? Oh, no. And Juliet even texted me this morning. She said, thank you for being the foundation yeah. for our family. Yeah. And, you know, it's not me. It's God. Yeah, but you open yourself. Yeah, you, everyone has to be willing. He wants each one of us. It's whether we're willing to set aside the world and our, ourselves and allow him to work. Yeah, Pam of 1998. Mm. <laughs> she have gotten through September 2012? Oh, no. No way. Okay. I would have 
walked away. Okay, absolutely. So God used that time, and I want, I want everybody to hear this. This was 13 years of God working on you, mm -hmm. of you praying desperately for your husband, and it seemed like God was silent during that time? Well, he was working in me, but it seemed like he was silent for working in him. And, you know, I would. I would question God. Where are you? What are you doing? You see me here. Um, it just, it takes faith to stand and just wait. Yep. That's the word. I'll tell people I think God answers prayers three ways. Yes, no, and wait. Mm. And, and that waiting is hard. <laughs> Especially when you think 13 years of yeah. waiting. That's a long time. Yeah. Hmm, that's absolutely amazing, though. Uh, I appreciate you know, the fact that you... Go ahead. I will, you... Sometimes we don't know what we're waiting on. Well, not sometimes. Most of the time we don't. Yeah. I had no idea. I knew Jamie was stubborn. I knew he was strong-willed. That's what one of the things I love about him. <laughs> but um, I didn't know what it would take to get his attention, but God did. Right. And, I mean, God took his word and a pastor here leading a Bible study with me to get my attention, but some of us are a lot more stubborn. Absolutely. And so he had to... <laughs> I'm just going to me. Yeah, I'm hard ahead. Yeah. So, no, I'm not agreeing with you, but... Yeah. <laughs> told you this for years that I think most women would have left they would have mm -hmm. never stayed and the reason Jamie is where he is today is because of you and your faith but let me say let me ask you this are you perfect oh no did, did you struggle uh, in those 12 years oh as sure was growing and developing you oh yeah most definitely and you know I struggled with selfishness you know, I don't deserve this. I should just move out. I can make it on my own. I'm, you know, I think we all have a stubborn streak about us. Um, but he whispers to us. And sometimes we don't know that he's whispering, but he is. And he allowed me to stay and he knew what the plan was. So um, just, I think the most important thing is to wait and seek God first, and He will answer. It's not always the way you want Him to, but He does answer. And I think the, the struggle many um, people have, especially couples and marriages, is they don't want to put that time in. Oh, they yeah. don't want to stay in it. They mm -hmm. just go, well, if that's the way you're going to be. I'm gone. Yeah. And so they don't allow God to have time to work in that. Mm -hmm. Lots of us are, um, well, especially the younger generation, <laughs> want it now. Right. Um, it's funny, we were somewhere and there was a sign on the road that said, divorce, $189. Really? I mean, how easy is it to get out? Yeah. But that's not what God's plan is. Um, God wants things on His time. Right. His time is perfect. Right. Now, and I, I want to say this, and I know I'll speak for Pam and, and, and me both. Um, when we talk about people waiting and staying in a relationship, we're not talking about a dangerous relationship. Right. No. Okay. That there are situations where a spouse has to get out of that relationship for yeah. their own safety or for the safety of their children. So we're not saying you, whatever God, whatever's right. there. You know, God says you have to stay. Right. But in your situation, that's what God knew would be best. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you were willing to stay. Mm -hmm. uh, and without God's word, without that hunger, mm. you wouldn't have stayed. No, most definitely not. Yeah. I would have just walked away and took, took the girls and said, you're on your own, I think. Right. So... Well, you, there is a Bible 
first I think is kind of your your favorite, maybe your life verse, uh, and you said you wanted to be able to share that, and then you also had some, some mm -hmm. other thoughts that you wanted to share. You want to go ahead and do that now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, one verse that I, I love is Psalm 37, 4, and it says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, one thing that we don't understand is we don't even know what the desires of our heart are. I mean, God's, God knows our hearts, what we really need. Sometimes I think we as individuals think, oh, I need this, or I need this, and that's my heart's desire. But if you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll show you what your heart's desire is. And we, I'm not beating up on women, but women tend to let our feelings and we think with, uh, with our feelings instead of with this, with God's word. <laughs> so, oh yeah, they can. But you know, I wanted to read something else from Psalm 37 because I've been reading this because I knew I wanted to quote that scripture, but I was reading yesterday and it, Psalm 37, 23 and 24. If the Lord delights in a man's way, he makes his steps firm. Though he stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. And that's what God did for me. All I had to do was get in his word seek his word, seek him, and he held me. And that was, I can't say it, thank you enough, Lord. Would, would you go back and do it differently if you had the opportunity? The last 13 years, the, the struggles that you guys went to, would you go back and if God said, don't worry about it. I'm not going to let you go through any of that. Would you trade it? Would you change it? Mm -mm. Because what he's done oh, is, and there aren't words that can explain it. That's what's so awesome. I mean, everything he does, the outcome, it doesn't mean it's, it's going to be great for us, but it's unexplainable. The peace. I don't know, like you said, did I remember that day? I don't. I remember being mad at Jamie, <laughs> being very mad. <laughs> um, he probably remembers more than <laughs> I do about how I acted. But um, I, God just takes it away. So, and but there is something that I do want to say. You know, this is what I want people to understand. God wants each one of us. And you may not feel him, um, but you have to examine your life. Are you in the word? Are you trying to learn about him, um, reach out to him, pray? Um, surround yourself with fellow believers. Be in fellowship. You have to surround yourself with that because the world is cruel. Satan is trying so hard to get us. And I wrote down this just this morning. First, he tried to use our friends to pull me away. Then, it's funny, but he tried to use the, that broken church. He was going to separate us out of the church and you know there you hear so many stories of people who leave the church and don't go back and then he was going to try to use my husband or he may try to use a job or he may try to use your children or he may try to use a hobby Satan's not stupid he's going to use whatever he can to try to get you away from God because he knows the blessing but don't sit and wait for God. Reach out to him because you have to surround yourself in a study. I mean, I would study with someone. You would study with someone. We have so many great 
deacons and elders in our church that would study with people. Um, don't miss that opportunity because God's plan is so much bigger than we realize. Oh, I can't believe Jamie Ellis is sitting right there. Oh, yeah. That's a miracle. Yeah. And to see what God is doing through him mm. is a miracle. It is. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. So, but remember, God changes us first. He had to change me first. 13 years he had to work on me. I don't know who was more stubborn, me or Jamie. I was that I, no, no. It's okay. That, that is so beautiful. And that is something, and we've already said this, but working on me. So maybe whatever situation you're in today that you're struggling, maybe your prayer should change from change this person to God change me and see what will happen when God makes that transformation in your life. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Pam, thank you mm -hmm. for sharing your story. Thank you. Uh, I don't know fun. why y'all came this morning. There's a lot more here than I'm used to seeing. <laughs> well, people are here because they needed to be here. And it may not even be about their story. It might be about the story of one of their kids right. or their grandkids or brother mm -hmm. or sister or whatever. Uh, but I'm praying that you have encouraged them me too. Uh, through your story uh, and how God's Word can get you through anything oh, yes. when it is in you, like obviously God's Word is in you. Oh, thank, so you. thank you. Thank you. For that. Absolutely. <laughs> can, I, can I pray for you? Mm. Would that be all right? Oh, most definitely. Let me pray for you. God, I am so thankful for Pam. I am thankful that she was willing to allow you uh, to rule her life, to rule her marriage, her family. And because of that, Father, we have seen great things happen. Her husband transformed and, and just doing powerful things in your name. And so, Father, I pray that you would continue to be with Pam, that you would bless her family, not just her immediate family, but her, uh, her extended family. And I pray that she continues to be an inspiration to them and to us as well. So, Father, would you fill her so that she can fill all the people that are around her. Father, we thank you for your work in our lives when times are difficult. Thank you for being our rock and our foundation. We love you, Father, and we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you guys show your appreciation to Pam?